Hello. Today we're going to be going over some basic solving equations. Here's an example I'm going to work through first, and then we'll go through and explain a little bit of the process. So this says solve the following equation for x. I see a negative 5 in front of parentheses, and so I know I need to distribute. Be very careful. Some students will only distribute 5, but this is actually a negative 5. So we distribute negative 5. Now we end up with negative 20 minus 35x plus 7 is equal to negative 118. Now if we would like, we can combine like terms here. Negative 20 plus 7 will give us negative 13. We'll bring down the negative 35x and bring down negative 18. Or negative 118, I'm sorry. Then from here, we'll add 13 to both sides. We add 13 to both sides, we're going to end up with 105, which is negative, is equal to negative 35x. Lastly, we divide by negative 35 on both sides, both sides, and then we end up with x equals 3. three. Remember, we can always check our solution by substituting our answer in for x and evaluating. Today, we're going to look at solving equations using the reverse order of operations. You are going to have to apply the order of operations in reverse and use the distributive property. In this situation, we might ask ourselves, how do we solve this equation? Well, we need to use the reverse order of operations. And what I always remind students to do, if you knew the value of x, what would you do? If I told you x was 10, what would you do with 10? Well, you would say 10 plus 2 because it's in parentheses. Then, you would divide that by 6. And lastly, you would subtract 1. However, we might not actually have a value of 10 here. We don't know what x is, so we need to go backwards. So, we use the reverse order of operations. So we go backwards, what was the last thing we would have done? Well, it was subtract 1, so let's do the opposite of that by adding 1 to both sides. Now we end up with x plus 2 over 6 is equal to negative 3. Now what was the second to last thing we would have done? We would have divided by 6. So now we undo that by multiplying both sides by 6. This gives us x plus 2 is equal to negative 18. And lastly, we would have added 2 as the first step. Well, this is our last step, subtracting 2. So we end up with x is equal to negative 20. And that's our final answer. I'm going to go through one more example. Here is one where, again, students may get confused and think, hey, let's do negative 8 minus 3 as the first step. However, we need to distribute negative 3 first. Why? because multiplication comes before addition subtraction. You actually could work backwards without distributing, but we can talk about that later. A lot of students are going to prefer to distribute first. So distribute that negative 3 into the parentheses. We'll end up with 97 is equal to negative 8 minus 18n plus 15. Now we'll combine like terms. We'll have 97 is equal to negative 18n plus 7. Subtract 7 from both sides, giving us 90 is equal to negative 18n, and then we'll divide by negative 18. This will give us our final answer of x equals 5. Again, check your solution by plugging it in. Oops, this isn't x, this is actually n. This happens a lot. n equals 5. I apologize for that typo. There's a couple more examples for you to try in the Pear Deck.